Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. It's bright and early. Daily discipline. Mind, body, and soul. This is how we get through. It's Sunday. I'm going to do my study group for warriors, my hardcore heads. If you're new to the channel, I think I got a couple of new subscribers. You'll catch up. Basically, I just go through my notes. I write notes. I keep notepads everywhere, and I'm always writing notes on the things that I study, things I think about. I'm always on YouTube, studying, watching videos, listening to interesting talks, and Let's just go through some of this stuff. It's really just a way to give you something extra to think about. Not everybody needs anything extra. Some people don't need anything extra. I do. I do this every day. So the first thing on my notes I want to talk about is uh, when you've lost everything, it's hard to believe anything is truly yours. This is a symptom, a syndrome, I should say, a psychological syndrome of loss. Many of you myself included, have gone through this, where we've lost everything. I know what it's like to lose everything, to be out in the streets, be homeless. That's when you lose everything. <laughs> lost my woman, lost my house, my possessions, everything. And then I clawed my way back up. And even though I own a home, it's hard for me to truly feel like that it's mine. There's always an undercurrent of anxiety that this could be taken away from me. And that's where the syndrome is. That's where the problem is, is having that anxiety that something can be taken, that it's hard to settle on solid ground when you're used to earthquakes, when you're used to the ground crumbling underneath you. You're used to losing everything. I became really good at being a loser. I know what it's like to lose. <laughs> That's a, a world I know all too well. So then winning, you feel like a fraud, like a fish out of water, like, like you don't belong there, like it's not real. Someone gives you a job as manager and the whole time you're manager, you think, oh, you're gonna be demoted or fired. You walk on eggshells that you put there as a survival mechanism. Some people use this as a way to survive. I know a guy who did so many years in prison when he got out, he still lived like he was in prison because he always thought he was going to be sent back. And I would just tell him, well, all you got to do is not do anything wrong. Do you do anything wrong? And he says, no, I'm trying my best to do right, but they could send me back at any moment. And I didn't understand it. You're not on parole. You're not doing anything wrong. What, what are you talking about? But it's just this mentality. You're used to living on broken ground. You're used to living on broken ice, like you, you're on an iceberg and it breaks and now you're just floating on one of the pieces. It's still registering in my head that I own this home and every time I swim in that pool, I float around and I'm like, this is my house, it's so weird. Let's move on to the next one. Some of you can relate to this syndrome, some people can't. You know, I feel sorry for people who've never gone crazy. Some people out, out there have never really gone crazy. I mean, really crazy. I don't mean crazy one night at the club because you thought some guy was touching your woman or whatever you think crazy is. I mean actual crazy, straight jacket crazy, rubber room crazy. Serious, diagnosable mental conditions. Crazy. Where people look at you and they're like, oh my God, this guy's insane. <laughs> you look at yourself that way. People who've never gone through that, I feel sorry for you. You're, you're naive. You don't really get it yet. <laughs> you have to go completely mad in this world in order to survive in order to really understand what your direction is. Let's move on to the next one. I could talk about that for a while. You know, Alan Watts, who's a hippie, he was not a conservative, he was British. Even in British society, he wasn't conservative. He was always a liberal guy. And hippies were always liberal. He was a big flower, uh, waving, acid-taking hippie. But he's an incredibly intelligent guy. Alan Watts has an amazing story. And he had been in 
involved in the Church of England in some capacity, in a religious capacity. Uh, I don't know what his title was. And then he got kicked out for exploring other religions and taking them really too seriously. And he got really into Asian philosophy and became more of a philosopher. And of course, then it, that was the 50s, but then the, the 60s came along and the hippies emerged because he probably got his start during the beatnik revolution and then the hippies came around and he joined that whole group but he still was this amazing philosopher you can find him on youtube he has hundreds of talks he said in one of his talks in 1965 you better be a democrat or we'll shoot you <laughs> and he was talking rather flip just being kind of funny as he does he's a really intelligent guy about how democracy is spread with this idea of freedom and utopia and rights and all this stuff that they spew as propaganda but it's usually at the end of a gun oh you don't want our freedom bang right in the face <laughs> take that we'll drop bombs on you and when those bombs are that's where we build the McDonald's You notice how we don't bomb countries that have McDonald's? That's a fact. Here's a rule for you old guys. And I'm absolutely serious about this. I'm fucking sick of this shit, man. I really am. I don't like hanging out with guys my age sometimes. I don't. I'd rather hang out with younger guys sometimes only because the conversation is better. Guys my age, look. If you're, if you're 50 or older, I'm 51, I'll be 52 in less than a month. If you're my age or older, Gen X or older, here's the fucking deal. I'm, I'm real serious about this. You need to stop complaining. At least when you're around me, you do. All I'm ever going to ask you on any one of these complaints is what are you going to do about it? And you don't like that question, do you? Oh, it shuts you right down. We can just sit in silence then, motherfucker, and you can just sit and think like a little child. <laughs> oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. Stop complaining about your health. I don't want to hear about all your fucking doctor's visits. About how much pain you're in. How your back hurts and your knees hurt. Shut the fuck up. Stop complaining about politics. Oh, you think you have a fucking TV show? Go start your own goddamn YouTube channel. I'll watch it if I fucking feel like it. Shut the fuck up. We hang out and people just want to spew what they've heard on the news and, and, and the four or five talking points of the day and how angry or fearful they are. Shut your fucking weak ass mouth. Learn to talk about something else. Stop complaining about your family. Uh, family. I don't want to hear about your wife and how much you're annoyed with her. I don't care. It's not appropriate for you to be talking about. I don't want to hear about your annoying kids. Stop complaining about them. It makes you weaker. It's not solutions. You're just dumping your emotional drama on others. Oh, you feel so much better after hanging out and you've dumped all your fucking emotional baggage on everyone else and you walk off, oh, I love my friends. They're such a good support group. You're a fucking a blood-sucking vampire taking everybody's energy. You leave the room in a down place. Nobody's learned anything. And you just got to back your fucking load up, beep, 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 and then just dump it out. Mm, yeah, I feel great. That's friendship. Fuck you. Stop complaining about that shit. Stop complaining about your failures. I'm so sick of listening to guys talk about how they lost some shit. They lost a deal or a woman or whatever 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Get fucking past it, man. I used to do this. I'm no different. I've learned to get past it. Just had a buddy over the other day and all he wanted to talk about was failures of the past. How much we used to suck in the past. I'm so tired of that conversation. Stop complaining about oppression. You don't know what oppression is. You don't. You live in Western civilization, you, you really don't know. Go to Africa. I've been there twice. Let me take you to the ghettos of Nairobi. You think you know what the hood is about? Oh yeah, you think it's about rims and gold teeth and selling crack? You don't know what the hood's about, motherfucker, until you've been to a place like that. Shut up about oppression. I'm sick of it. I'm fucking sick of it. You're at Walmart buying a bunch of cheap shit, complaining about your fucking oppression. 
<laughs> wearing $300 shoes, protesting because of a statue you don't even know who it is. Talk about oppression. Shut the fuck up. Complaining about the environment. Oh, I'm so sick of the global warming conversation about your fucking doomsday theory. I really am. I'm so sick of you doomsday idiots. I'm tired of it. Shut your fucking mouth. And I'll tell you, you either do something about it or you shut up about it. Period. This is an interesting question. Are beliefs dangerous? Or, or is, is a racist belief dangerous if it's not acted upon? Is a murderous thought dangerous if it was never talked about or acted upon? Are your thoughts in your heads? I'm not talking about stuff that you go around spewing about, ranting about. I'm just talking about the stuff you think. Are beliefs, the stuff you believe, the shit that's inside your head, that garbage can, is it dangerous? And can you separate action from thought? Is it possible? Or is a thought automatically an action? A racist person, a hateful person, is dangerous just inherently. You guys don't even get it. I have a friend of mine, uh, I hang out with a little group of guys at the gym. One of the guys is an Israeli Jew and he's always wearing the, the uh, Star of David and all that. He's from Israel. He was in the, not the Mossad, the uh, whatever, the, there's a special, it's not the Mossad, it's a special forces part of the Israeli, whatever. And he was involved in that. Tough guy, great guy, strong as fuck. I see him every, almost every day I'm up there. Another guy that hangs out in our little group that we see every day is a, uh, I'm not going to say what gang he used to be involved in, he's a little older guy, but he's got SS, that'll tell you something, but he's got SS bolts, red SS bolts tattooed on his neck, he's got a lot of other very scary tattoos on him that would definitely offend you. He's absolutely involved with that world. And then the other guy that hangs out in the group is a, a black guy who's probably in his mid-60s and he did a lot of time in federal prison in Illinois and he was a, a, a full member of the Black Panther Party and was involved in all kinds of violent actions. That's why he went to prison. And he told me one day as we were watching the news, just me and him, how he can't wait for the race war to pop off. And I said, why? And he said, well, his greatest fantasy is just to go and kill white people. That's all he wants to do. These are the people I hang out with at the gym. We see each other, we hug, we, we give each other fist bumps. We look forward to seeing each other. I'll often see the, the Black Panther and the guy with the SS bolts just talking away, having a great time, laughing it up. I'll ask you this question again to all you woke people. Are beliefs dangerous? And if you say yes, then how can I hang out with a group of guys like this every day at the gym, six days a week, and we're not scared of each other, we like each other. We give each other rides. When, when Tony, the black guy, the Black Panther, when he had some medical problems, he couldn't drive because his eyes were fucked up, but he still wanted to go to the gym. So the Jew is driving the Black Panther to the, uh, to the gym. He hates Jews. He hates them, despises them. You guys don't even get it. You don't understand. I'm sure you don't even get it. The videos get a little bit long. I got fucking four pages. I'm just going and going. I got so much to talk about. Imagine talking to someone who's not distracted. That's weird. I talked with a guy the other day and he wasn't distracted at all. I'm so used to talking to people who are distracted, who barely listen, who are always darting their eyes around or looking at their phone or whatever. This guy was just right in the whole time, just talking to me. And it was so weird. I was just kind of creeped out by it, only because I'm not used to it. I liked it. I walked away thinking, man, more people should be that way. I should be that way. I need to be more focused on who I'm interacting with and to stop thinking about so much, stop multitasking so much. And when I'm talking to somebody, communicating with somebody, really laser focus in on them, really listen with intent and to respond uh, 
appropriately and intellectually. Get rid of some of these distractions in your world. And I'll leave you with this motivational idea to think about. Seven times down, eight times up. That's the course of life. Seven times down, eight times up. And you're a winner. Food for thought.